You're listening to the Public Health Epidemiology Careers Podcast, Episode 111. Welcome to the Public Health Epidemiology Careers Podcast, where we explore public health epidemiology careers and share tips and strategies to help you enter or transition into the field. And now your host, Dr. Charlotte Hughes-Huntley. Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me on this episode. My guest today is Amy Schlotthauer. Now, if you attended one of the public health consulting and entrepreneurship expos that I held back in the spring of 2019, then you would have met Amy. She was a guest on one of the expos. And Amy is the president and owner of AES Consulting Firm. She has a master's degree in public health from the Rollins School of Public Health at Emory University and a bachelor's degree in anthropology from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Amy has over 13 years of experience in project management, grant writing, program evaluation, qualitative and quantitative research methods and data analysis, group facilitation and consensus building, and using these skills to help clients tell the story of the work that they do. Now, some of the highlights of her work include evaluating the Health Disparities Collaboratives, a national quality improvement initiative in community health centers in the United States, helping to launch the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation-funded Finding Answers program, which focuses on reducing racial and ethnic disparities in cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and depression. Also, coordinating all aspects of the evaluation of Wisconsin's Garrett Lee Smith Memorial Act Youth Suicide Prevention Activities, as well as managing the data collection and reporting for several of Wisconsin's child death review initiatives, and co-creating innovative models of of care for pediatric populations for the largest pediatric health system in Wisconsin. I'm excited to introduce you to Amy. If you haven't met her before, and even if you attended the expo, there's likely a, quite a bit that you will learn about her in this interview that you didn't hear in the expo. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that today's show is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com forward slash public health and browse the unmatched selection of audio programs. Download a title for free and start listening. It's that easy. I absolutely love Audible. (laughs) So go to audibletrial.com slash public health. All right, let's join the interview with Amy so that you can hear her public health story. All right, well, today on the podcast, I'm very excited to introduce you all to my dear friend and colleague, Amy Schlotthauer. Amy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Dr. Huntley. I'm super excited to be a guest on this podcast. I've enjoyed listening to it in the past, and it's just a great honor to be a guest. Yeah, this is great. We, If some of you are thinking, she sounds familiar or, you know, you're looking at this name. Amy was on my, let's see, my second um, public health entrepreneurship uh, expo, consulting and entrepreneurship expo. And uh, so I was really excited to have her join me then. She's very big hit with everyone. There were lots of questions and follow up. So I'm thrilled to have you on the podcast because I would love to share um about you, your journey, talk about your journey into public health with with the whole podcast audience. So I've already kind of summarized a little bit. I read your your bio and talked about you in the introduction, but in your own words, just say hello to the audience. Tell them a little bit about your background, who you are, you know, what, what you've done before, kind of what you're doing now. Sure. So I um, went to college thinking I was going to go to medical school and through the pre-med coursework and some opportunities I had to shadow, I just really realized I was not, that was not what I wanted to do. And subsequently, um, I was an anthropology major and one of my classes I took was medical anthropology. And it was through that class that I really was introduced to public health as a career. 
And I started reading more and doing some internship opportunities to explore public health and decided that I wanted to pursue getting my master's in public health. And that is what I did. Um, I went to Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia at the Rollins School of Public Health and got my MPH in behavioral science. And after I graduated from public health, I went into academia. So I worked for a few years at the University of Chicago and then transitioned to the Medical College of Wisconsin. And I had a great experience at both locations and learned a lot about academia, uh, so much so that I again, realized I didn't want to stay in academia. So a lot of people would go and pursue a PhD. That was not something I was interested in. So I did a little bit of a career pivot and kind of joined the business side of public health through employment at our state's largest children's hospital. And from there, I was exposed to a lot more um, in terms of opportunities for different consulting ideas. And while I was there, I started a consulting LLC last summer and initially only worked on consulting projects on the side. But as I got more opportunities for work, I scaled back my then full-time job to part-time. And then this February, I left that job and decided to pursue consulting full-time. And so that is what I currently do. Um, my business is AES Consulting Firm. Oh, I love hearing that story because um, I remember you talking about this in the expo, but I don't remember the hospital part. I don't, um, that's, yeah. that's, that's interesting. Of course, I have a background, um, but I worked in clinical microbiology lab. So what was your, um, what did you do at the hospital? Sure. So I was part of the population health team that the hospital um, started. And one of the really awesome things that my team was charged with was researching and developing pilot projects that were aimed at reducing the triple aim of healthcare. So we were looking at increasing positive health outcomes while reducing costs. So we kind of operated as a research and design team for the hospital and um, different aspects of the system would approach us with an idea and we'd help them workshop it and develop it into a pilot program. And um, eventually, if we were able to garner internal resources, we would help launch the pilot of those programs, um, which involved, you know, developing metrics and evaluating them. And it was just really fun to be part of such a visionary exercise. Yeah, I can relate to that. I have that feeling um, when I can get involved and in, I'm a problem solver. So I love to kind of dig in and, and figure yes. out what the problem is and how can we solve it. And, you know, it's good to even know that you're, you know, know that about yourself. For sure. So I'm, I'm curious now, when did you first become interested in public health as a career? So I would say my junior year of college, that's when I, like I said, was enrolled in this medical anthropology course. That's when I first even heard of public health, because prior to that, I, I like a lot of people were like, what? Public health? I think my family is probably still asking what is public health. Um, so it was really not until my junior year of college, and I graduated college in December and started public health school the following August. So it was a pretty quick turnaround for me from deciding that's what I wanted to do to actually enrolling in public health school. And I have to say that what I thought I was going to be doing when I went into public health school was quickly just obliterated once I realized the full scope and breadth of all that encompasses public health. Um, and honestly, I think that is something that has been an ongoing journey for me. So, you know, I got exposed to sort of the academic side of public health very early on. And then through different opportunities that I've taken 
have gotten exposed to different aspects of public health, which is something I've really enjoyed. So I think I'm still kind of learning about public health as a career. (laughs) Yeah, I can. Yeah, it's a very broad field. And I think that that is a positive and negative. I think for some people, they get stuck there not knowing, you know, which way to start and where to go and what to do and making a decision is difficult. And then on the other hand, it's great because for people like myself, I like, you know, the change and you can learn about one area and either decide to go deeper and become more specific or pivot into something different. Like you said, when you became exposed to one area, it caused you to sort of make a shift and you're still working in public health. But there's so many different things you can do. So we'll never get bored. That won't be one of our problems. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. And I, I completely agree with something you said about like, liking the change and the opportunities are broad and that being a positive and sometimes a barrier because it can feel very overwhelming. Like, well, I see public health in this very circumscribed way. I think the more opportunities that we can create for people to broaden their understanding um, only helps serve the field. Absolutely. Um, So how do you think your previous roles uh, helped you prepare for, you know, transitioning to what you're currently doing? That's a great question. I, one thing that an early manager of mine recommended doing is thinking about public health and the experience and education that you get from working in public health as filling different um, tools in a toolbox. So rather than thinking of yourself as I work in this specific area, thinking about what skills do I have that I can bring to situations. And so um, something that I do when I reflect on all of my previous work is what skills did I learn from that position that I can carry forward or further develop? Um, And what skills do I, did I maybe get exposed to and find that that's not really my cup of tea? Um, So I think a lot of skills that I developed in previous roles that have served me well now being a business owner are um, definitely project management skills. So as a business owner, I work with a portfolio of multiple projects at the same time. And that's not unlike previous roles where I was working on different grants at the same time. So being able to manage um, different work projects has been helpful. Um, Budgeting and being able to work on how to set set up budgets um, was a skill I learned in writing grants way back in the day. And now I'm applying it for, um, that's how I get paid (laughs) as a business owner. Um, And setting up those systems that ensure um, invoices go out and checks get um, paid. I think a a lot of other skills that I developed on the job were um, various communication skills with different types of people. So um, when I was working in academia, I partnered with a lot of community organizations as their evaluator. And so really, really getting good at listening to what the needs they had were, has served me very well as a business owner and listening to what my clients really need and helping them kind of formulate what, what that is. And then, you know, skills in strategic thinking and developing vision, um, change management, all of these things are invaluable skills that I bring to my business that I would not have gotten from a classroom, but really through working in various environments. That's great. Um, I agree. Those are some um, some great examples. And it's amazing because you don't really know while you're working in any position, what skills are going to be really important for you in, in your business, yes. you know, into the future. You never no. really, sometimes it's the things that while you're doing them, they think 
this is really pointless. This makes no sense. We may not even give much thought to it. But then down the road, once you start a business, you look back and realize how much that, you know, taught you and yes. how important that was. Yes, for sure. I mean, when I was setting up grant spreadsheets for budgets, I was like, oh, this is horrible. But now I'm like, oh, I'm glad I got that opportunity um, because I, that is an invaluable skill I now use. That's great. And then let me ask you this. Um, what population or condition or you know public health issue or problem um, are you most passionate about? That is a great question because I love asking that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also feel like I, I mean, I could fall down the rabbit hole of a lot of issues. Um, but something that has really stuck with me throughout, you know, even leaving high school is maternal and child health and women's health. I've interfaced with that in a variety of different ways um, throughout my career. First, um, in terms of health disparities, then for a very long time in injury and violence prevention. And then, I mean, working in a children's hospital, your whole focus is the pediatric population. Um, So I think that is probably the top issue that I somehow always find a way to intersect with and something I'm really passionate about. That's awesome. Now I am going to dig a little bit into your business for a moment, because I would love to know more about the population. Like who do you serve? And if you could just kind of describe your ideal customer, that'd be really helpful. That would be awesome. Um, So I think my ideal customer really comes from recognizing that Um, In this day and age, public health is increasingly needing to address complex health issues to really change health outcomes. So, you know, focusing on very large systemic issues, racism, poverty, uh, structural determinants of health, things of that nature. And when we talk about those complex health issues, we know that no single organization can tackle those issues by themselves. They require collaboration of organizations. So my ideal customer really are those collaboration of organizations that are working to tackle complex health issues. And specifically, you know, new, maybe new collaborations where there are organizations that are like, thinking, hey, we need to work together, but we're not really sure how to do it. Um, I really like working with um, multidisciplinary groups to facilitate the process from where they currently are to where they ideally want to go. Hmm. That's really important. It's so important because I really think you're right. I think there's more of a We've always known that collaboration was important in in the diversity, you know, the more diverse and rich the organizations are, the the more powerful, more impactful they can be. But I think it's like really being reinforced on a different level. So really being that connector, that person who has the, it's definitely a skill set to be able to really work with a diverse group and bringing those different types of um, entities, organizations, or parts of organizations together is definitely a, a superpower. So, <laughs> Do I get a cape with that? <laughs> or a cool costume? <laughs> you do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in that same, on that same note, what kind of products or services um, do you offer? Sure. So I think um, something that really strikes me, if you look at the most recent public health wins survey that the DeBeaumont Foundation did, where what are the top areas the field of public health needs to develop skills in? They are systems and strategic thinking, developing vision and change management. And those are all skills that I bring to collaboration. And so again, Um, A lot of organizations will come and say, well, we collect this collection of surveillance data and we are partnering with an organization that we know collects this data for the same population, but in a different way. How how do we use both of our data sets together? Um, So it's really a combination of services that involve facilitation of meetings 
but also um, a lot of process evaluation skills. So developing metrics for whatever it is that they're trying to achieve with their ideal state. System mapping of, well, this is the way we've always done it, but we know we need to change. We're not quite sure how we go about changing it to meet this ideal thing. So I really excel in helping organizations map out, this is what they're currently doing, and this is all the changes that we will need to do to get to where we want to go. And this is how we're going to evaluate it. That's great. That's really good. It's very needed, very important. So I imagine you stay pretty busy. Yes, yes, I'm getting busier. I, it's been a, a consistent onboarding process since, like I said, I mean, this I'm relatively new to working and focusing on this full time, but it's been enjoyable so far. So I'm going to now, and thank you so much for just everything that you're sharing. This is really helpful. And, um, and I love digging in and, and learning all these different things about you. Um, I wonder, as, as you are aware, the audience that, you know, follows the podcast and from your time with me at the expo, you know, we have a, a group of students who are currently enrolled in public health and they're really worried in a lot of cases about, you know, what the future looks like in their career. And then I've got this group that has already completed their degree and they're having some issues trying to get into the field. So there's sort of two distinct type of groups that listen to the podcast. Of course, there are a lot of other professionals that listen, but I know these are the two, like a two targeted groups. So I'm going to ask you to think about students for a moment. Um, current students of public health who are interested in careers in public health, what kind of advice or tips um, would you share with them? Sure. So I think something that, I've alluded to already in our conversation, but starting to think about what you are bringing to the table in terms of your toolbox of skills. Um, So what are things that you like to do? What are things that you have found through your coursework and practicum and any internships that you've done um, that you are you excel at what has been feedback from professors or practicum advisors that Um, They've told you, hey, you're really good at this. Um, Those things, I think, focusing on those things and looking for careers that are looking for those same skills. So looking at um, what the, um, the job skills portion of a job application, focusing on those and matching those to you know, that list of things that you're good at and you like doing, I think is um, something that not everyone immediately goes to, even though it may seem obvious. I think a lot of people think about the job title or the area of concentration they want to work in. So I want to work in HIV AIDS. Um, And I'm not necessarily saying completely do away with that, but I think the more you can focus on skills and skill development, especially early in your career, um, the more broad that job landscape is going to be for you. Um, And another um, piece of advice is really... um, setting up some networking strategies for yourself early on. So that is something that I really regret not doing early in my career, Um, mostly because the word networking used to and sometimes still does send shivers down my spine. I have to sort of reframe it in my head as relationship development, Um, I think to the extent that you can find mentors or people that are going to push you to develop the best version of yourself, whether that's in a formal quote unquote mentor role, or maybe it's just a really insightful friend, um, that is the type of person you want to have in your corner. People that are going to be consistently reminding you to develop yourself professionally and motivate you to acquire skills in areas that you need skill development in. That's great. That's great advice. 
Great advice. I love that. And it's so important. I mean, I like even the way you, you chose to kind of reframe the word networking, you know, because it, it does sometimes just the sheer mention of the word can make people kind of cringe and decide, okay, that's not what I want. But, you know, but yeah, that's a great idea. If that's, you know, if it gets that, if it makes you feel that way, I've, you know, um, reframing it is a great way to kind of deal with it or approach it. So I like that. Yeah. And I think too, um, not being afraid to ask people questions, especially people that you may know that are maybe have been in the career field for a few years, 10 years, whatever number of years. Um, I always kind of felt like, oh, I don't want to ask them a question. They're going to think I'm dumb or whatever. And, you know, as I've kind of moved through my career, I realized how silly that thought is. And I've never asked more questions in my life than before this year. And, you know, in turn, I have made myself more available to public health students um, because I think having those types of relationships really serve both um, both people. Mm, that's a good point. Yeah, that's, that's really important. Now, let's not leave out the graduates. So I've got this group of graduates that are going, wait a minute, but what about us? <laughs> They've already graduated. And for whatever reason, are just having facing challenges trying to get into the career field or trying to transition into the field. And um, sometimes they just end up getting frustrated. You know, they feel stuck or just getting frustrated. So um and they'll hear about all these things and uh, they wish they should, you know, could have done or wish they had done when they were students. And they're thinking, well, what can I do now? So do you have any idea, uh, tips or, you know, advice for people that fit that category? Yeah. So I think one piece of advice is the same piece of advice that I had for students. And that is if you're not already thinking about your resume in terms of skills that you bring to the table, um, definitely do that. Um, and something that I started doing a little bit later in my career that, again, I should have been doing earlier is doing informational interviews. So if there are places you want to work or roles that you really want to get into, find someone local that is in that role and ask if they would be willing to have an informational interview with you. Um, and then you have the opportunity to ask questions about their trajectory and how they got to be where they um, are, if they have any advice. Um, And sometimes those types of informational interviews down the road can transition into jobs because you have another person kind of in your relationship network. Um, And then again, trying to broaden your focus in your job search. So um, instead of just going to a public health focused employment job listing, um, look, look, type in some of the um, job skills that you are looking for instead of public health. Um, I think the, the consequence of that is you sometimes are wading through a lot But like we were talking about earlier, public health is very broad and sometimes jobs are not categorized with public health being front and center. Um, So the extent to which you know there are public health jobs available in education or there are public health jobs available in business, um, kind of going through some... um, maybe a little bit more time intensive work, but going to different places instead of the kind of natural public health departments or academic medical centers, um, kind of the default thinking of public health roles and trying to really expand your focus on, well, what could I bring to the business environment or the education environment? And I wonder if there's a role um, that would meet my skill set there. That's great advice. That's so important because Oh, that's really good. I like that. I think that will take a lot of pressure off of people when they can, you know, like you said, if sometimes you maybe just take public health out of the search for a moment, look, and then 
find, you know, connect it. When you read the description, look at the organization. And like I said, think about what you bring to the table, that understanding of public health and how it can impact that business environment, that maybe non-traditional public health setting is again, another combination of, you know, seemingly diverse, you know, um, areas and then just making it, it's a powerful connection. If you can take your public health knowledge and understanding into a maybe a non-traditional type of setting, a business environment that's not, like you said, the regular health, the normal health department setting or the hospital setting and um, and and have a big impact in that environment. That's great. Yeah, and you might even find like, okay, this was not what I was thinking. But something that I think is helpful to do, um, you know, even if you don't leave a job, periodically think, okay, what, what are things that I am liking about this job and what are skills that I'm gaining from this job? Where are areas that I've noticed I might benefit from some professional development and how can I attain those? Um, I think if you get into a habit of consistently reflecting on those things, you set yourself up for future career success. Yeah, I think that's great. Well, Amy, you have provided some amazing advice. Thank you very much. This has been great. Um, I, you've also shared your connection information. So if any of you are listening and you're thinking, man, that resonates with me, I want to follow and learn more about her. Or if, you know, you may be in an organization where you realize that we could use a consultant like that or services like that, um, make sure you visit the show notes page for this episode and you'll find the connection information uh, links to connect directly with Amy, but um, Amy, just tell everyone your website and you know, where they can go um, just in case they're able to type it in right away. Sure. So my website is a E S consulting firm.com. And I'm also on Twitter at a E S underscore consult. And I'm also on LinkedIn as Amy Schlotthauer. Awesome. Awesome. Again, this is going to be in the show notes. So if you're driving, don't worry. When you safely arrive, <laughs> just go to the show notes page and you'll be able to connect with Amy. Schlotthauer is a very hard word to spell. So <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you, Amy, so much for being on this episode. Thank you so much for having me. I had a great time. I'd like to say thank you, Amy, for joining me on this episode to discuss your public health career journey and for sharing great advice and tips for the audience. I'd like to share with you the connection information. So if you're interested in connecting with Amy further, then just visit the show notes page for this episode, which is episode 111. Go to drchuntley.com and that's D-R-C-H-H-U-N-T-L-E-Y dot com. Click on podcast from the main menu. And once you're there, you can navigate to episode 111. Remember that you can also click on the resources tab from the main menu of the website and access your free audiobook and start your free audible trial, or just visit audibletrial.com forward slash public health. All right, everyone. Until next time, have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you for listening to the Public Health Epidemiology Careers Podcast at drchuntley.com.